So we'll continue our discussion on the following result. If you have two square matrices A and B as shown here, then the determinant of A times the determinant of B is the same as the determinant of the product A and B. Now in the previous video, we saw how we can simplify the determinant of C down to this. So what we need to do now is to show that this is in fact determinant of A times determinant of B. And I'll just give you an overview of what the required steps are. You can fill in the rest of the details. So given this expression, uh, we can rewrite things a little bit. In particular, I'm going to swap the order of the summations. So I'm going to sum over the sigma prime first, and then sum over the sigma. So this is going to go inside. And I'm going to split this product into two. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to turn this into a sigma prime. And I cannot just do that. I have to undo what I've done. So I'm going to have a term, the original term minus 1 to the number of inversions of sigma. And then I'm going to multiply this by uh, by the following. All right. So these two multiplied together give you 1. So I've basically done nothing except throwing this thing inside here. Okay, now I can rewrite this as, and I'm going to bring this outside the summation because this whole expression does not depend on sigma. So this is what I have. So I've rewritten things a little bit. The biggest change is this. So this is this term here, minus 1 to the number of inverse of sigma composed with sigma prime inverse, is going to be the same as this. And the key is that if you look at the parity of the number of inversions of sigma and the parity of the number of inversions of sigma prime, it's the same as the, num it's, it's the, same as the parity of the number of inversions of sigma plus the number of inversions of sigma prime inverse. And that quantity turned out to have the same parity as the number of inversions of sigma composed with sigma prime inverse. So that's something that I'm going to skip. But now, let's focus on this thing. As i range from 1 to n, sigma prime of i ranges from 1 to n as well, but not necessarily in that order. Whereas sigma i goes through all possible n values as well. If you change the indexing a little bit, so I'm going to let j to be sigma prime of i. That means i becomes uh, the sigma i inverse of j. I can rewrite this as, and now this will just be j, and this will be sigma of sigma prime inverse of j. OK? Now, as sigma ranges through, so this is uh, supposed to be an S of n, as sigma ranges through all permutations of 1 up to n, so does this composed permutation. Now, this over here is the same as sigma composed with sigma prime inverse of j. So in other words, this is precisely the determinant of b. All right, so I can rewrite that as the determinant of b. But now, every term in this summation has a factor of determinant of b. So I can take this out of the summation and write this instead. Uh, this is actually a prime here. If you focus on this summation, it is the determinant of a. So that gives us determinant of b times determinant of a, which is what we are required to prove. Now, as I said, uh, I have left out some details here, especially the fact about this having the same value as this product here. But I hope that I've given you enough details that you'll be convinced that this is not only believable, it's something that you can actually write down a proof for yourself.